Whenever hummingbirds come up in conversation with my family, my dad will bring up the story of how a hummingbird ended up in the garage and how my mom needed his help to get it out. And really, I don't remember what all they tried, but from what I recall, my dad ended up holding the hummingbird and releasing it. This was after it had become really exhausted though. So for this video, I went through social media posts, articles, uh, what rehabbers advised. I looked for the most humane approaches to help coax a hummingbird out, as well as determining the most effective approaches to try first. That way we don't get to that point of exhaustion where the hummingbird is super tired. It, it can be really dangerous too. Um, if you find yourself in this situation and it has gotten to a point where you found a little hummingbird and he is really worn out, I also researched what to do as far as aftercare goes. So first we need to talk about why this happens because if you understand the why, you can be more aware and, and prevent it from happening in the first place and then you don't have to go through the stress and concern and your hummingbirds don't either. The biggest culprit reported is the bright red emergency release handle that's on your garage door opener. That, that red dangling cord that probably is hanging on your garage right now. To a hummingbird that just looks like a red flower or a feeder, or they're just curious. So they fly inside thinking that they're heading towards food and it's not. And here's where things get really problematic. And maybe, you, you know, you probably already knew this, but a bird's instinct in this situation is to fly up. And in a garage, up isn't exactly boundless. They aren't going to hit the ceiling and go, oh gee, maybe I should go down. Maybe if I go down, I can find my way back out. It just doesn't work that way. And this is why when this happens, people head to social media for help. Birds also have a tendency to fly towards light, if they can find it easily anyway. And that will be important when I get into the advice. Another cause, and I remember seeing this from a bird rehab center, and they were posting about this maybe a year or two ago, but your car's taillights when they're in the garage, that'll attract hummingbirds as well, especially the little curious juveniles. Even when your car's lights aren't lit up, they're shiny enough and reflective enough to attract them. And by the way, it's not just your garage. If you leave your window open or a shed open, something inside, especially if it's bright and colorful, it could attract a hummingbird, especially if it's curious. But when it comes to garages, understanding what attracts them can help you prevent the incident. So one step would be either remove the red dangling cord or cover it up. Some suggestions out there say maybe use tape. I don't love this idea because tape can get gummy and things could stick to it. But hey, you know, you could wrap some black fabric around it or just paint it or something, anything to hide that red. And then another step to take is just being really careful about leaving your garage wide open, especially from July to September when the juveniles are out and migration is starting to come up and they're exploring territory more. Um, but I know that this advice isn't always going to work if you're, you know, if you're working on your garage, you're doing yard work or something like that. But now that we know why they get stuck, let's talk about what actually works to get them out safely. And I want to be really clear here. I'm going to share methods that are backed by wildlife rehabilitators and the Audubon Society and the Cornell Lab of Ornithology because there's also a lot of advice out there that can actually make things worse or stress them out or injure them. But the first thing you wanna do, and this is universally recommended by experts, is turn off all the lights in your garage and close any extra doors or windows. You wanna make that big open door the brightest point in the entire space. Remember that hummingbirds will fly up, but they will also fly towards light. So you're basically creating a beacon that says, hey, the exit is this way. You're also focusing them on the target this way. And I've seen this work so many times. And what's really cool about it is you're working with the bird's natural instinct instead of against them. Once that open door becomes the only bright spot, the hummingbird should figure it out on their own and fly right out. This tactic though is not set it and forget it. You wanna monitor them. Something to really keep in mind is when it comes to hummingbirds getting caught inside garages or sheds or your house, it can be serious very, very quickly. These tiny birds have a heart rate of 1200 beats per minute and they need to feed like every 10 to 20 minutes to fuel that crazy metabolism. So when they're stuck in your garage, they can collapse from exhaustion and hypoglycemia in just a few hours, sometimes even less. So if after 15 minutes, your little guy is still struggling, it's time to move on to the next method. This is where you use the hummingbird's hunger to guide it out. 
get a hummingbird feeder, make sure it has the proper four to one sugar, a water sugar mixture, no red dye, just white sugar, and place that outside your open garage door. And you wanna hang it up as high as you can. The key detail here that makes all the difference is the bird may not notice the feeder if it's way below them. So what you wanna do is hold that feeder up as high as possible, maybe tape it to a broom handle and then hold it up to the bird's level. Once the hungry hummingbird spots that feeder, its drive to feed will usually overcome the panic and it'll come down and drink even with you standing right there. If you can't hold it up, like with a broom, or you're worried you might scare the hummingbird away, try hooking the feeder to the metal framing of your garage door itself. And once the hummingbird gets lower down to sip, it will also see that exit a lot better. Variations of this trick involve hanging a planter with some really bright flowers to lure the hummingbird out. Going back to the broomstick, if you're holding the feeder on a broomstick or something like that, while the bird is drinking and calm, you can slowly lower the feeder and move towards the exit right outside. The moment the bird sees that blue sky rather than ceiling, it usually will fly off on its own. If the bird is tiring out and it's not finding your feeder, it's time to move on to the next tactic. Get a long handled object, something like a broom, a push broom works really well, and hold it up upside down to where the hummingbird is hovering and be really still. As the bird loses energy after they're flying around for several minutes, it will gratefully land on that object and it's like offering a branch to them uh, for them to rest on. Once the bird sits on your broom, you can slowly and carefully carry it back towards the exit. The key here is patience, so slow movements, don't rush this part. And here's what's really cool. As soon as the hummingbird sees that large expanse, um, especially with you know the garage door being open, it will usually fly off. Another thing about these tactics is they kind of build on each other. So it's not like, okay, well, turning out the lights didn't work, so I'll turn them back on and now I'll hang the feeder out. Keep the lights out, um, keep the feeder up. When that doesn't work, then you, know, you, you do the uh, broomstick situation, but it's all kind of building on each other. So we're just constantly optimizing our situation in order to help guide these hummingbirds out. Now we need to talk about what doesn't work because some of these solutions um, can actually stress the bird out even more and injure it. So first off, don't just leave the garage door open and hope that the bird will figure it out on its own. Also, don't try to net the bird or grab it while it's flying. I know this seems obvious, but uh, you'd be surprised how many people panic and then try to get a net. Hummingbirds have hollow bones and tiny limbs that can break easily. Plus, the stress of being chased can cause shock. If you're going to use any kind of net, it should be only as an absolute last resort when the bird is already too weak to fly. And by last resort, this is a full-on rescue mission and you're going super gentle maybe even while being on the phone with a rehabber so that they're walking you through it. Other online advice I've seen that are just not good approaches is using a hose. Even on the mist setting, um, a hose to guide it out is a bad idea. This is going to stress the hummingbirds out even more, which is going to burn up its metabolism quicker. And also you're getting your feather, their feathers too wet um, and that's going to make it really hard for them to fly. Don't ever use water. Also, throwing things at it to scare it towards an exit, uh, you run the risk of injuring it, and again, you're burning up its metabolism by stressing it out. Now, with all of that out of the way, we still need to talk about aftercare and when that's necessary. A lot of people don't realize it, but if you find a hummingbird that has collapsed or is too weak to fly out, simply giving it a quick drink and releasing it might not be enough. However, with talk of aftercare, I'm not advocating for full-on DIY rehabbing. What I'm sharing is a very brief respite based on wildlife rehabbers and authorities like the Audubon. If you have an exhausted bird that can't fly, first gently warm it in your hands for about 10 minutes, very, very gently. Hummingbirds can become hypothermic when weak. Then place it in a ventilated box and keep it warm. You can fill a sock with rice and warm that up and then place that in the box as well so there's a, a heat source available. Make sure you have some paper towels in the box and you may even wanna put a stick in there for them to perch. After attending some hummingbird banding events, I've also learned that it helps to have some darkness to reduce stress. You don't wanna completely blacken the box, but if you could put a light colored towel over it so it could let some light in, allowing them to see the nectar, but not so much light that they're stressed out that really helps. 
but, and this is really important, any bird that has collapsed should be evaluated by a licensed wildlife rehabber. These birds often need a day or more of proper care to fully recharge, and releasing them too soon can lead to them starving or going into shock once they're back outside. So in this situation, what you're really doing is holding them safely for a very, very temporary period. You're gonna call a rehabber for some advice. Some wildlife rehabbers will have resources on their website about what to do in these situations, especially if the rehab center is closed. So this is what you do until you can bring it into a rehab center. Never hold on to a bird for more than 24 hours. And really, it's not technically legal to have a bird in your possession anyway. Um, but when you find an injured bird and maybe the rehab center is closing, and I've, I've been in this situation too, they will advise you on how to keep it overnight and then take it in. And when it's under the direction of an actual licensed rehab center, this is less of an issue. So that's what I'm stressing here. You want this to be under the advice of a rehab center or what their websites say. You don't want to just DIY and make it up as you go along. I've seen some DIY rehab stories go incredibly wrong. And by the time it's, it's actually given, like the bird is actually given to the rehabber, it's because its health has declined. Again, a lot of this is preventable just by understanding what draws them in in the first place. But if they do get stuck in your garage or your friend has one stuck in their garage, now you know how to be a hummingbird lifesaver.